When I picked up a camera for the first time, I had absolutely no idea how to use it, as most people do. You know, you pick up a camera, you try your best at giving it a try, and then you realize that, wow, there's a lot of things to learn. Something that I realized during the course of my journey from when I picked up a camera until the point where I am today is that there is a couple of things that I wish I knew about before venturing into the entire process sort of like blindfolded and a couple of pieces of gear that I wish I knew about before buying the different things that I bought because when you first jump into a hobby such as photography and videography it's very easy to think that you need everything in order to make something but that is usually not the case. Most of the time you just need a camera, a good microphone and that's it. So I wanted to make this video for those of you that are in the beginning process of starting your own YouTube channel or maybe picking up a camera for the first time and venturing into starting your own business and trying to sort of like navigate on what kind of things that it is that you should have and should buy and invest your money in because camera gear ain't cheap and there is a bunch of things that I bought that I haven't used one single bit, but in this video, we're gonna cover the things that I've actually used almost every single day and that I highly recommend. So the first thing is going to be very obvious and that is going to be a camera. In my case, one of the game changers when it comes to a camera was not to have sort of like a point and shoot camera because this kind of camera is great. This is the Sony CV-1 and I like this camera because it's portable, it's easy to use and it's sort of like an on-the-go camera. But something that makes this camera very limited in the way that I make my videos is that you can change out the lens. It's not an interchangeable lens camera. And that is why I highly recommend you to get something where you can detach the lens from your camera. And there's a bunch of different cameras that you can get. This, what I got right here is Sony A7S III. It's a full frame camera, super expensive. This is a camera that is aimed for semi pros, someone that knows what they're doing with the camera. Of course, you can venture into the hobby and you know get the best thing that you can possibly get for the money that you have and then learn as you go, which is also a great way to get used to the gear that you have. But I highly recommend you buy a camera with an interchangeable lens so that you know that you can change out the lenses as you learn how to use the camera that you're going for. And for some of you, it might be obvious. You know, oh, klart, man ska ha interchangeable lens, as well. But when I bought my first camera, I honestly didn't know which kind of camera that I should get and why I bought the camera that I did. I just knew that, okay, this is a good camera according to different websites online. Something that is very important when you are looking for a camera is to see that the camera actually has the specs that you want the camera to have. That was something that I did. And the first actual camera, like an actual DSLR that I got was the Nikon D300 or D500, I think, which is a great sports camera. It's a great APS-C camera, but it is not made to make videos, such as the A7S III, for example, because this is a video-centric camera that is focused on making videos. But there's also a bunch of cheaper options that you can get that is gonna fit a bunch of different budgets. But it all comes down to what kind of camera it is that you actually want, because if you wanna make videos, then you should look for video specs in your cameras. But if you wanna take photos, then you might wanna steer a little bit towards like higher megapixel and maybe faster, you know, burst shooting, those kind of things, rather than having a high frame rate when it comes to video and, you know, there's always compromises to make. The next thing that I think is a very good investment is a lens with a low f-stop. This right here is the Sony 24mm GM lens. It is a very expensive lens, yes, but for me, it has paid itself off multiple times. I've shot some of my most viewed YouTube videos with this lens only. For example, the poker b-roll, the office b-roll, the hacker b-roll, all of those were shot with this lens and this lens alone. And I remember when I first started looking around for lenses, when I sort of like had this in interest of using a camera as a camera should be used, I did not know what an f-stop was. I, it was, okay, it's a 1.4, what the hell does that do? It's a 24 millimeter, okay? Is, is like the measure of the actual lens or what is it? The whole focal length and, you know, millimeter and field of view, all of that was just gibberish to me. As soon as I realized that the lower the number of the lens when it comes to the f-stop, the blurrier the background you will have. That was sort of like what clicked for me because right now, for example, I'm shooting at f1.8, 
with a 20 millimeter lens. But the reason that the background is a more blurry is because it's such a wide lens. If I were to go a little bit closer, you can see that the background is blurring out a little bit more. But having a lens with a wide open aperture is definitely something that makes it easier to make better videos and makes it more fun to capture videos or photos in a different way. And one lens that I highly recommend is this. This is a Zeiss Batis 85mm f1.8. There's a bunch of different versions of an 85mm, but getting an 85mm with a 1.8 aperture is gonna get you a long way when it comes to getting those creamy looking background bokeh blurs, balls, or oh, blurred out backgrounds. And as for me personally, I've been using this lens for around five years now, and I still think that this is a freaking fantastic lens. Most of my content that I make is created on the go. You know, it's a running gun shooting situation. I make videos, except for I'm sitting here and making these kind of videos because then I have everything set up here in the studio. But whenever I'm out and about and trying to grab things, you know, trying to record it behind the scenes of something that I'm shooting, it is crucial to have a good tripod. Can highly recommend you to invest money into a good tripod. I bought this tripod which is the peak design travel tripod carbon fiber edition i think two years ago one and a half year ago and it has been in my camera bag at all times and i think that the crucial thing with the tripod is that it should be small and portable because otherwise you will not bring it if you have sort of like a heavy tripod that is just you know oh it's it's gotta be heavy to carry around then you will not bring it. And you're gonna miss out on all the opportunities of bringing out the tripod because the tripod was heavy and stuff. And of course I know that not everyone can afford a tripod like that because this is very expensive. It's like six or $700. But if you're investing money into things, then I highly recommend to save up to get the better thing and the better option because it's gonna last you longer than if you go for the cheaper option in most cases. Having a good camera bag is one of those things that makes it fun to bring your camera gear. Because if you have a camera bag that is too clunky, that is too big, that is capable of fitting in too much camera gear, then you probably will not bring it because it's gonna be too heavy. It's gonna be a pain in the ass to bring. It's gonna be one of those things that is like, ah, oh, should I really bring that or should I bring the iPhone camera today. What I got right here is Peter McKinnon's Nomadic camera bag. Love that a whole lot. It's sort of like the everyday bag, I think. And what I like about that camera bag is that it sort of like makes you select the things that you want to bring on an everyday basis. So you don't just pack everything down and then just use one camera. It's more like, okay, should I bring my drone? Should I bring this camera? Should I bring that? Do I really need this? And for me as a sort of like running gun everyday shooter, it's much better to be very selective about what you have in your camera bag instead of just packing everything down. Last thing that I wanna cover is this, a good microphone. Wow, did it took me a long time to understand that I really needed a good microphone and actually something that is not taking up too much space because the more of a hassle it becomes of bringing up your camera or setting up your recording, attaching your microphone to the camera, the less you will actually use your camera. So for me, I tried to sort of like figure out what has been making me use my gear more. And all of these things that I've talked about right now has actually made me use the camera gear more because I've tried to focus on having the gear that works the best for me on a day to day basis. And having this microphone as my sort of like my main vlog microphone is something that made a huge difference. For a very long time, I used this microphone right here for all my videos. That was it, there was nothing else. Now I have a little bit more of an expensive setup, but it, it's like one of those things that it's gonna cost you a lot of money, but it's also gonna up your content a whole lot. I think the most important thing that I wanna finish off with is that you don't need to buy any of this. The most important thing is what is it that you do? What is it that you are creating and does these things fit into your creative process? If you can afford it, go out and buy a lens with low f-stop because you're probably gonna have a whole lot of fun with that. But most importantly, use what you got and try to utilize all the different settings and all the different features that your current camera has. Maybe your iPhone, maybe your point and shoot camera or whatever it might be. Most of the time, the only thing we need is a camera. Really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And uh, Peter Evans will be done. We'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe. All that good stuff, huh? Have a good one.